This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Stick around to the end of the video for a little bit more info and a special offer. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be redesigning some popular fast food logos. Now, if you've been hanging around my channel for a while, I've redesigned some popular coffee logos. I've done some uh, thrift store logos. Have I done other logos specifically? I don't think I have. Maybe, I don't know. And this is a pretty popular common request that I get. And I know a lot of people are gonna have a lot of opinions on that, but that's what this channel is for. So if you end up enjoying this video, you learn a few things or have a good time, make sure you subscribe down below so you see more videos from me. And also like the video if you enjoyed it. So without further ado, um, it's so hot already, I am suffering. Today we're gonna be redesigning the logo for Taco Bell, Burger King, and KFC. What was my thought process? in choosing these logos. Well, similar to the coffee logos, I wanted to, I feel like I've done other logos. Whatever. So I chose these because I, oh, I redesigned soda logos. What is wrong with me? I redesigned popular soda logos. Did I say that? I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. So my thought process behind choosing these logos was I didn't want to touch ones that I think are already successful. And there are some brands out there that have such incredible global recognition and their branding is so refined and so well done that I have no reason to touch them. I don't like, fixing things when they're not broken. So I'm not gonna be doing McDonald's in this video or in any future videos because I think McDonald's does a lot of things right with their branding. And they've kind of like built that over the history of their brand. And that comes with time and a lot of just like customer acquisition over decades and decades. So I'm not gonna be doing McDonald's. I probably will never do McDonald's. Another one that I think is really great that I will never touch is In-N-Out. If you live in the US, you've probably heard of In-N-Out. And I think there's a lot of things like McDonald's and are their color palette similar? Do they have a lot of similar branding elements? Yes, but their branding is very simple. I love a lot about In-N-Out and so I wouldn't really ever touch it. Now there's a ton of fast food places. I know a lot of them are regional. I know there's a lot out there. So I'm gonna be tackling the ones that I feel need maybe a revision or I just, don't get too giddy when I look at their logos. The first being my favorite fast food place, which is Taco Bell, or the, mm, tied almost with Del Taco. I do like Del Taco a lot because they have their Beyond Tacos, so I am weak for that. But Taco Bell is such a well-known chain for a variety of reasons, and I think one thing that I want to kind of reapproach for their branding is the nuance of their fourth meal type of thing. I think there's a lot of cool elements already in play with Taco Bell's logo and their branding in general. It's relatively playful, it's fun, they have a lot of cool colors, and I think out of all of them, they're probably the most fun brand. When we talk about Burger King, I think there's a lot of things that we need to acknowledge about Burger King, starting with like looking through their history. They've had a lot of ups and downs and all these like crazy turns of ownership and they kind of have been like stumbling for the history of the company since like the late 50s or like early 50s when they started. So I'm gonna completely revamp Burger King. So it's gonna look completely different. Same thing with Taco Bell, but I think we'll stay a little bit in there, a little bit in their field of where they are now. And then the third being KFC, I want to kind of really minimize, reapproach a lot of what KFC has to offer. And I don't like the, what's his name? The Colonel, I think it's tired and boring. I know it's a staple in the brand, but quite frankly, we're gonna be removing him from the logo entirely and all of the branding entirely. There's a lot of things that I'm gonna do today that you might like, you might not like, and I encourage you to have a discussion down in the comments. I'm always open to hear your opinions. So, <clears throat> I'm getting nice and sweaty, so let's go ahead and get started. I don't have my Modelo yet, because we're out of beer, but I do have a Topo Chico, which is my favorite sparkling water, which also has phenomenal branding, by the way. Can we get a focus on that? I love this label. I love the bottle. I love everything about like the cap. It's so cute. So, love Topo Chico. Open it really slowly, because I just shook it around a bunch. <laughs> okay. Ah, can you hear that? Mm. Such a good bubble, such a good, a good sparkling water. It's a, no, it's mineral water, I'm an idiot. I've got a koozie to go over top because I always have koozies. This is a Joshua Tree koozie to keep my drink cold because I am sweating my makeup off already. Love not having air conditioning, highly recommend. Okay, so let's 
go ahead and get started <laughs> with the actual design process. So let's look at the Taco Bell logo. It is quite literally a bell. The founder's last name was Bell and that's where they got Bell from, Glenn Bell. This is their older logo that is still on some stores and in some of their branding, it's just outdated. And then they have this new one. It was done by this agency called Lippincott. They seem to do a lot of like really big legacy brands like Toys R Us and Starbucks and Southwest and stuff like that. And there we go, there's, there's a whole thing on there Taco Bell evolution. So that's the agency that did it. So back to this. While I don't mind this, I do enjoy that they evolved away from kind of like this classic early 2000s trend of just like over detailed logos and simplified it down a little bit. I like this iconography. I kind of like this one better, but I do like that it's just knocked out. This type really doesn't do anything for me. And also I don't like that the T and the B line up like that instead of the B lining up at the edge of the T. I know that's how they did it in the original logo too, but that's stuff that like, it just, it irks me. But that's just like, I guess, personal preference, I guess. Uh... So moving on to our mood board for this rebrand. Since they really pushed this, the fourth meal type of thing, the, the munchies late at night, I really wanna hone in on that emphasis on the nightlife and the kind of like quirkiness that is a lot of Taco Bell's dishes because a lot of them are not traditional Mexican food. It's definitely like a Tex-Mex Americanized version that is just like everything but the kitchen sink type of approach. And I'm, I'm a big old fan of Taco Bell saying that. So I wanna really use a lot of colors in the overall branding. And I wanna have like this cool, groovy, retro feel. Classic, take a shot every time I say that. And I like this trend of these, like the fruit sticker trend has been a thing for a while, but like the just the general sticker paper product good trend that's been going around for a few months with really wild type and a lot of really wild colors and texture. It's that really papery feel. I wanna hone in on that. So it kind of has that hand stamped, hand done vibe. So hopping over to Adobe fonts. I wanted to try out a few fonts by the Ono Type Foundry. So Ono Type is done by my dear, lovely typographer, James Edmondson. He's super awesome. Get Burger King out of there. Taco Bell. He has a lot of really awesome groovy fonts that have a lot of character to them. And I want to use them because they're truly amazing. And one of my personal favorites is this font, Ekman Psych. And I already have it downloaded, so we're gonna try out a few things with that. Um, I also gonna add Beastly. I already have Ono Blaze Face downloaded because I think this has that paper textury hand done feel that I think will integrate really well with the rest of the logo I'm gonna be making. I also really like these rounded windows. I think it's a cool shape to work with. I personally use it quite often and I know it's common in a lot of architecture. So I really think I wanna to try to use a frame like that for the rest of my logo. So I believe all of those are downloaded. So I'm just gonna play around with a few fonts. Probably something like that, the large one is the most sophisticated, so it doesn't look too dead and company. And the other one was beastly, would be a little thick. I'm gonna find one in here. Ooh, I really like that 36 point. Yeah, I think, let's go with that 36 point. Then let's try my dear, oh no. Something like that. While I sit on those, I'm gonna go ahead and start building up kind of like the rest of the shape that I wanted to use. I wanna still work with that window arch. And then I wanna make a new bell as well as kind of like some sun rays to go behind the bell to kind of fit within this window frame. So I'm just gonna make like a, a rectangle. I'm gonna grab those two points, round them off. And then I'm just gonna directly select these two points so I can move them to whatever uh, size I want. So I guess for the bell shape, let's head over to publicdomainvectors.org and see what they can have for a bell shape. See if there's any that I kind of like the vibe of. All right, cool, that's all we got for bells. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to make my own bell. I like this bell shape a little bit better. So I'm just gonna kind of like loosely redraw. Cool. All right, so there's our loose bell shape. I'm gonna turn it at an angle like it was in the original logo. And then I'm gonna go and cut out some of the details that I wanna keep. Start with the this part.
Okay, so I have my original bow right here and then this is with it kind of like narrowed a little bit, scrunched a, a few of the anchor points and it's just like, it's a, a bit different. See right there, this is the original, not the original, but the initial one I had made and then this is the one I just adjusted. And what I'm gonna do is take this, ungroup it, select all my white, group that, command eight to make a compound path and then select both and knock it completely out. So it's all one color, just like that. Now I can go in and adjust the individual anchor points to smooth out any edges. Like right here is looking kind of weird, so I think I'm gonna erase that. Kind of redraw that back in. Up here we got a bunch of anchor points just having a party. And as you guys may or may not know, the less anchor points you have, generally the smoother your line is. Things can just start to look a little wonky with their anchor handles kind of out. It can just kind of like make your line a little warped and inconsistent. So the less anchor points you have, I'm Ideally, the better. It's not always the case, but usually. Okay, that looks better. Cool, so now let's move on to, so that's gonna sit kind of like right about there in our See, now I get why they put the bell over there, but since my T top, there's a name for it, the top of my T is the same width as the base of my T, so I don't really have um, that as an excuse for me to do it the other way, so we're gonna have to get creative. So what we could do is stretch it, but it's not really the move that I want to do. So what we're gonna individually do is stretch these letters with our percentage thing right here. I'm gonna push them all up about 10%. What does a capital L look like? I mean, we could even mix casing here because I don't hate that at all. I'm really happy with those capital L's like that. Maybe what I'll do is copy them, paste, and I might just squeeze them down. Actually, you know what, for time's sake, let's just go with this. Why not? So my next plan of attack is to make some rays. So I'm gonna take my circle tool, and since I want my rays to come out from kind of like where my bell is. Pretty happy with that so far. I don't know, we'll see. So for the time being, let's drag this over to here and start playing with color palette because this is taking too long because I'm getting carried away. So they do really like this purple color. I like their old purple better, like something more like in like this realm, or like maybe a little bit brighter. Am I in RGB or in CMYK? Ew. So we got that purple. Let's push that up to be something up in here. Completely out of gamut there. I'm sorry we're being attacked. I want a bright orange like that, yes. And then I want a bright yellow. Maybe something a little bit brighter than that. That's pretty bright. Yeah, like that color. And then I want a good pink because I really liked the magenta that they had, but I think we could push it a little bit more to be something in that range. And maybe we can even add a fifth. That's like a really vibrant teal, like something kind of like that I see in there. Yes, yes. Cool. All right, cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I really like how like vintagey it is. I think it'll be really cool if like it was branded out some more, but let's try it with just one last thing in its original holding shape. And the anchor point won't round if there's another anchor nearby, so. You gotta remove those, and you should be good. Sick, okay. Now I just wanna do a little thing and see how all of this would look on black. Okay, I think I saved over a file here, but here's everything all mocked up.
All right guys, so we are back for part two, which is Burger King. So I looked a little bit into the history of Burger King and it more or less seems like they've had their fair share of ups and downs in their history. Um, they're, they've kind of always been like playing this catch up game with McDonald's, which is really sad because they've just constantly been bought out by another company and a bigger company and a bigger company. And it's like, it's a whole mess. So for Burger King, I wanted to do something really fun and make it pretty kind of like retro, you know? Now. And I wanted to kind of give them a new like character icon because their logo right now is just so bleh. So looking here at like the history, it's just, it's so generic, you know, like this, what, this, what, uh, this at least is like kind of interesting, but still weird. It's so boring and like, you know, it doesn't do anything for me. And then this, you know, falls into the same trend that the Taco Bell packaging or not packaging, um, the same thing that the Taco Bell logo did of this like late 90s, early 2000s rebrand where they just kind of like went in with all these like shiny details and all these colors and stuff, very of the time. So we're gonna do something completely different from that. And if you look here at my mood board, uh, everything is pretty like dinery, kind of like old fashioned fast food vibe. I really, really, truly love it. characters that are running or um are just like walking like this guy like things that wouldn't normally be what's the word there's a word for it when you kind of like humanize it give us some arms and legs and you know a face i love that i think it's wonderful i never get tired of it and so i've been drawing a few of them of that style like in the past year or so i'm not an illustrator by any means um but i do enjoy drawing i'm definitely not great so please do not come for me i am not good at illustrating i just do it because i have to sometimes so i wanted to draw a running hamburger or a cheeseburger a whopper really in a cute little fashion to kind of like mimic something of this like old style um, and I wanted that to be my Burger King so I'll insert that clip of me drawing that here Since it's a little earlier in the afternoon, I have a uh, I have a plain Lacroix, and then later I will switch to my Modelo. Okay, so that's the little illustration I've made, and I want to go into Photoshop. I did that in Fresco on my iPad, so I want to go into Photoshop right now and kind of play with some coloring and maybe, maybe, maybe color it individually, like give it some more like burger-like depth, or I might just make it all one color, we'll see. Like my first burger I started out with was terrifying. Oh, I also, yeah, I had this ground underneath him, but I don't know if that'll actually work with the type for the rest of the logo, so I'm gonna go without it for now. So I'm gonna group those, okay. So my first idea was just to make it kind of like a really warm orangey red, kind of like, Maybe a little bit darker. Uh, something like that. Like, I mean, I'm into it. I'm fine with that. I definitely think it hits home, like, that old diner vibe that I like. And maybe what could be fun is if I go in and color everything individually. But that might be a disaster because I did not build this properly. Let's go ahead and give it a shot anyway. So I'm just going to kind of, like, recolor all of this and then set it to a color overlay. <laughs> This does not look good. Okay, we are gonna stick with the original, the red. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this and pop over into Illustrator, and drop that in. And here we are gonna try out some of the type variations that I have already downloaded from Adobe Fonts. So we can start building out the type underneath. So I'm hopefully gonna go for something that's like Burger King like that or something just straight across like that. That's the goal. Now, the scripts I was looking for was something like pretty 
hand done looking, but I didn't want it to look cheesy. I wanted it to look vintage, like an old fast food place. So I pulled some of the best scripts I could find from Adobe Fonts. So I'm gonna show you those now. How many do I have? Two, four, six. So we got those six. So this first one is called MVB Mascot, which I thought was nice because it's going with our mascot. Oh, cool. So this one comes with a texture already in it, which is really great, super handy because I need that. So that's the regular without the texture. So I'm gonna leave that for now. The next one is called Prater Script Pro Regular. So that's like a little bit more like Victorian-esque um, when I think of like old like knights and stuff. Um, that's something I wanted to kind of lean into with the king element. And then this next one is meringue. Love this. I love that it kind of like almost leans back on itself. Um, I love the B and I love the K. I like how it just, it feels very retro to me. Um, so love that. Definitely need some help with the kerning, but that's no worries. Um, next we have our good old friend, Funky Dory. Um, this is a classic, I see this one a lot. It's a decent script. Next we got Hucklebuck. Did I not download that? Hucklebuck, I have not activated Hucklebuck yet. Give it a sec. After that we have Paragory. Para, Paragroy, there we go. This one has a similar vibe to kind of like, it sits vibe wise in between this one and this one. Very old timey 50s fast food. So I'm gonna leave that one up there. This one's probably the most modern script and then the rest of these are pretty retro. I'm gonna rank these. So like most modern to most vintage. So like most modern up here to more vintage at the bottom, okay? So we're gonna just make this the same red and we're gonna try each one of these out and see how we're feeling about them. So, so far we have Funky, no, it was Funky Dory. That no, was not Funky Dory. Mascot, so we have Mascot and Meringue. Those are the ones we're feeling so far. We got some with a warp on it, some without. We have Cut, uh, Paragroy, did not like it. Uh, did not like Hucklebuck, to Mom Bloggy. So let's try this last one. I like this, like it has such a good hometown food place vibe, but it doesn't really mesh with the style that I want. So let's cut it down to one of these. I'm impartial to this because it has the texture that I want already in it, and I like it as like a slight rise script like that. I like that, but you know what? I think I'm gonna have to go with this one. I think it really hits home the theme the best. So let's let's keep that. You know how I do. I like to put a little established date, if, especially if I'm trying to go for a more vintage look, makes it look more retro, you know. So 1950. So I really want to lean into that old timiness. And since it is kind of like an old retro thing, I'm gonna keep it all the same type. I feel like in a lot of like old signage, they didn't change the fonts very much. Everything was just kind of like the same font across the board. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a rise in it just so it kind of like fits that curve. All right, cool. So there is our Burger King logo, and I'm gonna go ahead and mock all that up for you guys here. I was gonna do this on my own, but I figured I should also show you guys how I'm gonna make this look more like a hand stamped effect. This is an effect I learned from Spoon Graphics here on YouTube. They have a lot of really awesome like Photoshop tutorials mostly, but they also have a lot of Illustrator tutorials. So if you wanna check them out, go for it. But they use this site called Texture Fabric and it's a site that I stumbled across before. They have a lot of really awesome textures. If you can't make your own textures, you know, what's really handy to have sites like this. So what I'm gonna do to make this look kind of like how it looks right here, like with this texture in here. I don't like how it looks in Illustrator because it's all vectorized, but what I did is I switched all of my type to the standard uh, version so it doesn't have any texture in it. And so now I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna make this look like it was hand stamped on like 
old like drive-through bags. So I'm gonna pick one of these textures. I really like this one because it has a lot of variance in the texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and ooh, copy it and then paste it into my Photoshop document. Um, there's a few different ways to do this. Um, I know in Spoon Graphics they do it a little bit different, but this is the way I've always done it. So I'm just gonna kind of like loosely position it. It really doesn't matter like that much because I'm gonna be able to move it. And then, so I don't have it as a smart object or anything. There's no point in it. So I'm just gonna hit Command L to open my levels. And I'm just gonna like bump up pretty much like the contrast in here. So there are as few gray tones as possible. So like overlay it of everything. And then I'm gonna go up to, into select color range. And I'm just gonna select, I mean, it really doesn't matter which one you select. I'm gonna select black. And then I'm gonna group those together hit my mask option. So if I turn this off, that's the effect I have. So if I unlink it right here, I can move this mask around a little bit. I might move it down to about there. You can also go in with like some texture brushes too. Those are always helpful. If you wanna just like clean up some of the areas where like there's some pretty heavy distress right there. I wonder if I have any brushes saved in here. I don't think I do. I have a lot of Photoshop brushes, whatever. I'll leave it for now. So just to disable that, that's what it looks like before. And now we have that. Okay, cool, so we have a nice texture, but that is not enough. So I have that, and then we're gonna go into our, do, 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 is it inner glow? Our inner glow, I believe. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate it. So duplicate your whole group. We're gonna delete our texture layer. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my fill up here to zero. I'm gonna go into my layer style and then have my inner glow overlaid on top. Now what this does is it gives kind of like, when you stamp something, usually the ink will go all the way to the edge and then maybe the inner part of the stamp will be a little like broken up or left out. So we're trying to mimic that same thing here. So I'm gonna fiddle with this in my inner glow. I like to add a little bit of noise. You don't have to. So my opacity is at 100. I'm gonna put my choke pretty high because I want that blur to go out pretty far. So obviously, you know, the more you have, the more it's gonna push in, but I'm gonna pull it out to the edge. So I really like what it's doing right around the edges, like right here. Maybe I'll put my noise down a little bit more like that. See, I like how I kind of have like a little bit of this uh, breakup in here. All right, cool. So that's without, that is with. You get way more definition, neat. Now, almost there. The final step to really hit this home, my edges right now are a little too perfect. So I'm gonna group both of those, my outer, or not my outer, my inner glow right there and my original art right there. I'm gonna group those. And if you're like me and you're afraid of damaging things, go ahead and duplicate it. And then you're gonna convert that duplicate to a smart object. So it's still completely, I haven't compressed it or kind of flattened it with my background at all. Then we're gonna go up into filter and ripple. So that's under distort ripple. And what this does is it's gonna jiggle my edges a little bit. So it doesn't look, so my lines don't look so straight. I mean, on the hand drawn element of the logo, it kind of looks like that already, but on the type especially, I really want to mess with those edges so it looks kind of like the ink is following paper. So I hope that makes sense. So if you just like look in here, you can kind of see, um, I have it set to large. You can have it like set to small and it can get really crazy. So medium looks like that, large, you know, you can get, you can get really wild with it. But I'm gonna keep it pretty clean and we're just gonna like mess with it, not even that much. like. Thanks. I had it in like 25. So you see a little bit of the distortion around the eyes. So that's without, that's with. You only wanna do a little bit cause you don't wanna just like completely mess with everything. But especially down here in the type, that's where you really need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yay. So that's without and that is with. So you get a little bit of that distortion up in there, down here and yeah, that's how you kind of fake it. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can mess with it quite a bit and get a probably a little bit of a better effect, but that's the way I've always done it. So yeah, now I'm gonna go ahead and mock it up on a bunch of different assets, some food packaging and everything, so.
All right, and our last contender for today is Kentucky Fried Chicken or KFC. This is a pretty well-known global franchise that's been around since like the 30s. And it is definitely on my top list of uh, worst fast food logos. Um, there's a lot of things about it that I don't really like, aside from the fact that I don't like the imagery of Colonel Sanders, and I know that's a hot take and an unpopular opinion. I don't really like it, and I know it's the guy who started it, and I understand why he is kind of like the mascot, but what I wanna do is kind of like modernize it a little bit and kind of like pull back on kind of that hitting you over the head branding if that makes sense of the old Colonel Sanders iconography and since it's such like an old brand because I didn't know I thought it like started in like the 60s but after doing some research I found out that it was founded in the 30s during the depression and the guy who started it Colonel Sanders started it then and then it became a franchise in like the 50s so what I want to do is kind of pull the brand back to some of its more vintage roots of course you know how I do because like all of these brands they fell into this this weird you know oversimplification and like this I don't know like a poorly progressed logo I like the old typography I don't like this if this straight up looks like this is his head these are his arms and these are his legs. Uh, same thing here. I don't like this little thing. I just see this little guy or like this, like a giant head with this tiny body. And that's what I see every time I look at the KFC logo. And I understand why they trimmed it down to what they did. Um, but I feel like they kind of did what Starbucks did with their logo over the past like 10, 15 years is that like they increasingly zoom in, zoom in a little bit more on the mermaid. So it's kind of like, that's the vibe with KFC. And they're such a well-known franchise that I know like changed their branding is you know a lot um, because they're so globally recognized but here's our mood board that I have put together I want to still pull it back to like that old timey kind of homegrown feel of a local chicken restaurant and I want to lean pretty heavily on kind of like a vintage sans serif that's really heavy. I have a wide one picked out and I also have a condensed sans serif picked out as well. And then I also picked out a script uh, that I wanted to play with to kind of like touch on, like I really like what they did here. I definitely think that that is their strongest type treatment. I like that this K came down into the I. It's at least interesting. It feels a little bit more homey, more mom and pop. Um, that's the vibe I want to be going for. I want to stay away from like the super corporate feel. I want to bring it back to feel a little bit more Southern, a little bit more homegrown, um, since that is the core of the brand. So for this, uh, we're going to dive down here and I'm going to show you guys the type I have picked out. And then I'm also just going to have KFC typed out. And then I'm also going to add a uh, finger licking good as their slogan. I believe that's how they phrase it. Or is it it's finger licking? It is. It's finger licking good. And they also capitalized all of it. So I'm just going to copy that. So I'm going to duplicate that the three times. Um, so this first font I have picked out, this, again, these are all from Adobe Fonts. The first one is called Noble or Nobel. I believe I liked, yeah, this one I liked the heavier, bold one. I think that's a pretty decent one. The next one I have picked out is Cable. Cable, Cable Black. Is this, one of them had a condensed version that I really liked. Mm. It's Noble or Nobel. Is that the only condensed version we got? Uh, bold condensed, no? We don't have that? Was that not downloaded? Oh, I'm an idiot. I did not download that one. I'll download that one as well. I really like this condensed version right here. So while that is downloading, I'm gonna show you guys this other script that I had the Paragroy picked out for my Burger King logo. I like a lot of things about this font. It feels very mom and pop, very homegrown. I especially like how this looks and this, it does not look good as KFC like that. I could probably finagle it a bit if I actually wanted to go with that and then just used this as supporting copy. Okay. 
So in all caps, I don't hate it. It does kind of remind me of like a Futura condensed, um, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's fine for now. Um, so kind of like the general shape I want to go with for this is more of like, I'll sketch it out. Um, <clears throat> that traditional logo type where it's like you have the type up here and then you have like maybe, you know, some type right here. So I think we could do like Kentucky Fried Chicken up here and then we could have it's finger licking good, kind of like art in the center, not art, but kind of like in a little blah, 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 like that and these cute little quotes. And then we could have like an established date down here. You know how I do. And then maybe what would be cool, since I want to really lean into this old kind of like, I really like this vibe and this kind of like this overlaid text, maybe we can do a big K F C in the back. That's the idea we're going for. We're going to stay away from any sort of like chicken iconography and stay away from the kernel iconography iconography because it's just too too traditional. I want to just go away from that and really focus on the type for this. So for this first one, I'm going to make an oval, maybe a little bit tighter. I'm going to go into my type on a path, click down here at this anchor point, paste my copy, center it, and I'm going to go in and fix my kerning. I want it pulled pretty close together, maybe make my spaces in between the words more. Okay, that's not hyphenated. Oh, that's funny, they suspended their slogan. That's mad funny. Anyway, we're gonna go for it. Um, so it looks like I don't hyphenate it, so whatever, we'll go without a hyphen. See, again, I like this really open concept type of logo that is really reliant on the type, um, but I do want to try a few different variations of this logo, so I'm going to build a few out right here. All right, so I ended up kind of with three logos for KFC and they're all intertwined in different variations of one another. This one probably being like the main logo that would be used on most assets. This would be a, like a little bit more of a detailed logo used in maybe some packaging, just like extended food branding. This could be more so like what's on most signs and then this could be like some in-store signage type of stuff. And then down here, this is just like a little like letter mark that I made using the script for its finger looking good. Uh, just so it's abbreviated down to just KFC and what that could look like. So um, overall, I think we really hit the uh, kind of like vintage mom and pop feel that I was going for. So I'm gonna go ahead and mock that up onto a bunch of different things and show you guys those here. Hey guys, just want to hop on here real quick to thank today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. If you're anything like me and one night you were bored and craving some comfort from a childhood favorite movie, the 1965 classic movie Help by the Beatles, and you wanted to watch this movie, but you couldn't watch this movie because it wasn't available in your country. For some reason, it was only available in the UK, and what did I do? Because I really wanted to watch this movie, I downloaded a VPN, and you know what? That's where it comes in for today. A VPN is a virtual private network. It helps protect your internet privacy, your IP address, and also transports you 
online to a different country so your IP, your direct location is protected. Internet security is really important to me as someone who spends so much time on the internet and I want you guys to be able to take control of your internet privacy and your internet safety today with NordVPN. And right now you can get 70% off a three year plan plus an additional month for free when you head over to nordvpn.com and use my code KELLORN or just go to nordvpn.com slash KELLORN. This special offer makes your subscription just a three four per month. Take control of your internet privacy today. I cannot recommend it enough. Stay safe out there. Go watch movies that you can't watch in your country. Transport yourself around the world. They have servers in over 60 countries and NordVPN's Chrome browser extension installs in just a few clicks and it's super easy right from the get-go. And they also have apps available for Android and iOS so you can protect your internet safety on your phone on the go. So keep yourself safe. It is risk-free. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go ahead over over to nordvpn.com slash calorn and protect yourself online today. Okay, back to the video. All right, guys, that is all I have for you for today's video. Thank you so much for watching me redesign these fast food logos that have been irking me for years. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I think Taco Bell already has some pretty great branding, but I think Burger King and KFC kind of dropped the ball a little bit. They feel very corporate, so hopefully I achieved more of that small brand vibe that I was going for. So if you liked this video, of course, leave a like down below and let me know down in the comments what logo you enjoyed and let me know if you didn't enjoy one. I will also link all of the mock-ups that I used. I didn't show any of those because it's not really that interesting or complicated. I'm not really teaching you anything. All of the mock-ups that I used came from creative market I will link the ones that I used below it is a paid mock-up kit but if you are interested in presenting some really nice work through some quality mock-ups whether it's for a client or it's for like your if you freelance and you need some mock-ups you know investing in some good ones is definitely worth the money they're not really that expensive I think I got like 15 12 or 15 mock-ups for $25 so yeah go check them out if you would like to download them creative market is really great I have downloaded a few mock-up kits from them before and I definitely think it's worth the money so that's my spiel on that I believe that is all if you have any other suggestions for me any other logos that you would like me to redesign definitely let me know down in the comments below and yeah that's all i have for you guys i hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next video goodbye